Hello, and welcome to another of Mrs. Kylie's art tutorial videos. In this video, we'll be making a reduction lino block print. So let's begin at the absolute beginning in our sketchbooks. I first traced my lino block so that my sketches would fit precisely into the space that I'll be working with. Uh, because my lino block is a square, I thought a circular shaped lino block print would be fun to work with. So I used some tracers uh, to get some circles that would utilize the most of the lino block. And I also wanted to incorporate text in my lino block so you can see what you have to do in order to make text work in this art form. Essentially, in your sketchbook, uh, you're figuring out what you're going to carve and whatever you do carve, if there's text involved, it has to be the mirror image. So you have to figure out what your letters are going to look like flipped in reverse. And I found that my cell phone, when turned off, acted as a really good mirror. So occasionally you'll see me bring that onto the scene and I'm using it and I'm looking in the reflection of the black screen and seeing how my letters will look when they're backwards. I also, at the very bottom of my page, um, doodled it out, sketched it out uh, in the reverse. I also planned where the middle of my text is and I measured out how how much space each letter would take up. Because my family loves to travel through Canada so much, I have a theme of east to west with the Halifax lighthouses and the British Columbia uh, Rocky Mountains. I used a photocopy machine to make an extra copy to mess around with. I didn't want to ruin my original artwork. And I also used the tech to flip it around and reverse the image to get a sneak peek at what my print will look like. Uh, also in your sketchbook in the creative process, you need to figure out what colors you're going to be working with because in reduction lino block prints, the great thing about this art form is that you get to use more than one color um, compared to just your regular lino block print where you might be just working with one color. So I chose, of course, our Canadian red and white and some black and then I threw in some blue for sky like a gray blue for sky and mountain colors and I want you to color in your rough copy so this uh, piece of paper will act as a recipe a guide your plan of action to help you through this project and without this complete and um, well thought out guide you're you'd struggle without it. So it's very important that you figure out what you're going to color, what color, um, and how your lines are going to look, and also the order of the colors that you're going to print. For me, I decided to start with the color that I used the most to the color I used the least. Now other people do it from the lightest color to the darkest color. Once your rough copy and plan is 100% figured out, then you can start moving on to your actual lino block. And I like to use the graphite transfer technique as you see I'm working with here. This is simply take a scrap piece of paper, cover it in the graphite pencil, um, and put it the dirty side face down on your lino block. Then take your art, your, your plan, and put it over top of that, line it all up, and I tape it just so things don't wiggle around on me. And then you trace over your drawing drawing. The graphite will transfer, as you can see there, uh, down onto your lino block and you don't have to redraw anything and everything's perfect. You don't have to do any planning on your lino block. It's a great, great transfer technique to use in this situation. Ta-da! There it is. A tip for designing reduction lino blocks, if you're a beginner artist, keep things simple. Uh, don't try for highly detailed, fine little uh, shapes. Keep them nice and big and easy to work with. Now to the plan. Our first step is to carve everything that we want to keep white. So that's the top of the mountains, the corners around the circle, and the lighthouse. Let's do it. This is a carving handle. Um, on one side you have the hole where you put the blades with a half circle uh, space to insert them and most kits come with a little variety of blades. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, some are tiny for little fine details and others are like big snow shovel plows and will clean out large areas. So you just get used to working with them. Most important tip here people. Carve parallel with your hand, not towards it. These blades are sharp enough to cut. 
So I want you to imagine yourself as a pelican gently swooping along the surface of the water. We are not going to cut like seagulls as we dive in for fish. Just nice, smooth cuts along the surface. Use the handle as like a lever to control how deep or how lightly you carve along the surface. I'm not going to speed up the video for a little bit now. I want you to see just how carefully I carve this top right hand corner. I have a nice big scoopy blade. I'm starting in an area that's really safe. I'm using air quotations that you can't see. Uh, a safe place to kind of get the hang of carving this surface. There's all different types of lino blocks that you can purchase that are made of different substances and different thicknesses from really, really hard wood to super soft rubbery uh, blocks that when you carve, it's like carving through butter. I've got this uh, type of lino block that almost feels like old cheddar. It's not super rubbery soft and it's not super hard like a piece of wood. Uh, the different types of textures give you different type of prints. Uh, the very hard, stiff um, lino blocks give you sharp edges and the rubbery ones are a little bit more softer and um, give you softer edges. Whenever I do a lino block print, I try to take into consideration uh, my carving direction since this piece is circular in nature, I want my uh, cuts to be circular as well. So I'm going to mirror and mimic that line, the outside line of my uh, circle. And when I carve into the mountains, I'll try to keep that feeling of the mountains directions and so on and so forth. If you're carving something like an animal that's doing an action, then perhaps your carving marks can mimic and reinforce and uh, repeat that idea of movement that the animal's creating. You can purposefully leave bits of your carving strokes like you do with your pencil strokes right you can leave little bits so that you have um, prints and marks uh, that show the direction that you carved in or you can leave it out, uh, carve it out cleanly it's totally up to you you're the artist you have control over these things what do you want the thing to look at like my recommendation is to go on Google Images and go look at what other artists have done with reduction lino blocks and see what the art style looks like, what other people have done, um, and just kind of get some inspiration and ideas and just a general idea of what your end product is going to look like because there's so much out there. Um, by no means, though, am I re recommending that you copy another artist's work but it doesn't hurt to see uh, what it's going to look like, right? So here I am carving around the letters and this is probably the hardest part of my lino block carving session because it just has to be perfect. That's font for you, that's letters. You know, if you mess up, then the letter changes and it doesn't look right. So it has to be perfect. So I'm using a number one, I'm really careful, I'm outlining, I'm clearing and I'm doing it uh, really, really slow. I've sped this video up quite a bit. But you know, the more time, the more care you put into this part of the art making, the better your print will be. And I'm almost done here. I'm just cleaning out the white of the lighthouse and I'm about ready to start printing my first color, which will be that lovely gray blue. Oops, I'm wrong. I had mountains to carve still. <laughs> So like I said earlier, I'm being very aware of my carving strokes here. I want them to mimic mountains. I'm purposefully leaving little bits of lino block untouched because whatever you don't carve away will take on the color of the ink. Whatever you do carve away will be the color of the paper, will not get any ink. So that's a good rule of thumb to keep in the back of your mind as you're doing this. And I'm just touching up a few spots. Okay, here we go. Here's the ink. I'm using some Speedball uh, block printing ink. I'm mixing the white and black and blue together with a palette knife. And then I uh, spread it out with a brayer. 
that's the sound of some ink that's ready to go on. I put the volume on so you could hear the noises. You don't want it too sloppy. You want a good kind of sticky sound um, when you are mixing the ink. If it's too goopy on the brayer and on the line of block print, it's going to goop into all of the little carving spaces that you made and you won't get the fine detail. Now I'm using a methodology where I've taken a piece of cardboard and I've taped it down onto my working surface and inside the cardboard I cut out a space to place my lino block and this holds it still, it's not going to move around on me. And I've also measured that opening in the cardboard so that the outside edges will line up with my pieces of paper. So every time I bring down a piece of paper onto this, I line up the edges. Not bad. I line up the edges so that they go in line with the paper and then you just keep doing this over and over and over again. I am using a wooden rolling pin to press the paper onto the lino block so that it picks up the ink evenly. Uh, there's lots of different tools. I like this uh, rolling pin right now because it's wide and will cover the whole uh, print and I use my other hand to keep that paper still. I did this 24 times and I used every little available surface to set them out to dry. You've got to wait about 24 hours. Now we're on to the next step. It is to carve away everything that you want to keep blue. I've done the white, now we're on to the next color and we got to carve away everything that we want to keep blue. That's why we colored our rough work so we can see exactly what we need to carve away. The sky and the mountains. So back to the carving tool and carefully making sure, again, that you don't mess up what you want to keep for later. It's a little weird right now at this stage where you're carving away stuff that was important a step ago, um, but that's okay. That's just the nature. And look, I am carved right through my lino block. There's a hole. It doesn't matter. It's okay because I didn't want ink there anyway, so no biggie. Don't worry about it. We're not trying this this piece of plastic right here isn't the end result it's not the piece of art that we're working for um, and towards it is the tool that we're using to create the art and we can abuse this tool as much as we have to to get that good little bit of art so now i'm just leaving um, everything that i want to keep red and printing with the red Sometimes when you make plans in your sketchbook, they seem like a great idea down with paper and pencil, but when you're actually working in lino blocks, it doesn't uh, communicate as well through this medium. And so I had to revise a couple things and carve out the marks in the mountains that I was going to leave for black for later. Luckily, my helper didn't manage to walk through my ink during this whole process. So we're nearly done with the red. I won't show you every single print that I did, but let's say there were lots. Now, our final step, we have to carve away everything that we want to keep red. That's the round red circle and the top of the lighthouse, which leaves us everything that we want to print black. I changed tools as I was doing this process here. I tried the rolling pin, but it found that it was too wide. It was too big for the small strip of text and the two little lights in the lighthouse. Then I used my fingers and I just pressed down, but the ink wasn't working and transferring as well as I'd like. And so I tried out this wooden spoon and it turned out to work out perfectly. So find all the wooden utensils from your kitchen and use them in printmaking because they they're really good. They're not so bad. I liked this wooden spoon. It helped me apply pressure exactly where I needed to, um, right over the letters and the windows of the lighthouse and nowhere else. I was also really careful when I used the brayer to apply the ink to this lino block. I didn't want to get it anywhere else. I wanted to keep the rest of the print as clean as possible and there you have it not too bad and so this is the end of the printmaking process here everything's going to be drying for the next few hours there were a lot of them and some were better than others and that is exactly why we make multiple copies because as you figured out now there's no going back we can't go back to the red stage and we can't go back to the blue stage 
I think this is one of my better prints and I'm going to sign and date it. And there's a special way of doing that in printmaking. In the bottom left hand corner, you are going to put a number um, out of the number of prints that you created. So I made 24 prints and this is my first one. So it's one out of 24. Then you're going to title it and I'm keeping with my theme of across Canada and I titled it from east to west. After the title, you put your signature and then the date. The whole reason that I'm working in pencil for this is traditionally um, that's how it's done. Also, uh, reproducing a pencil mark in a computer is a lot harder to do, and that makes your art less vulnerable to fraud. That being said, I was sorely tempted to clean up all the little mistakes and uh, glitches in this print with my Photoshop uh, abilities, but I resisted. I have given you and shown you exactly a true full print without any modifications, and here it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave your questions, comments, or compliments in the box below. Please click on like and share if you found this video at all helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There'll be more videos coming. Thanks for watching my Reduction Line of Block tutorial video.